today's edition of CNN 10 gets off the ground with four proposed space missions and they go well beyond the moon and Mars. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. Thank you for taking the time to watch our show. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, has four ideas it's looking at as possible future missions. Two of them would focus on Venus, one of them would explore Jupiter's moon Io, and one of them would fly by Neptune's moon Triton. I keep saying would because these are just ideas at this point. They'll each be researched by a team over a period of nine months. And when the final proposals are made, NASA will then decide whether to turn them into actual missions. So what would scientists hope to learn from all this? As far as Venus goes, one thing they're interested in is its atmosphere, which is toxic. Another is the planet's surface, which is hot enough to melt lead. Venus's scorching, rocky landscape could be mapped. Jupiter's moon Io is believed to be the most volcanically active place in our solar system, so NASA would like to find out more about the eruptions that happened there. And Triton, a moon that orbits Neptune, could also be mapped and studied to see if there are signs of an ocean beneath the moon's surface. None of these missions would involve astronauts, robotic spacecraft would be doing the traveling, and of course, all of them would come at a cost. In fact, the teams that are assigned these subjects will each receive $3 million just to come up with their proposals. If any of those are approved for missions, Space.com says each one would be limited to a price of $500 million, but that doesn't include the costs of launching the spacecraft and supporting it while it's in space. And for reference, the Juno mission alone, from developing the spacecraft to getting it off the ground to processing all of its information, was more than a billion dollars. NASA could choose to give two of these new missions the green light. 10 second trivia. The northern and southern kingdoms of what nation were unified in 3100 BC? India, Egypt, Persia, or Japan? Events around the year 3100 BC resulted in the unification of ancient Egypt. One thing you might notice when looking at many statues from ancient Egypt is that they're missing their noses. Of course, these artifacts are thousands of years old. Someone might think the noses would be the first things to fall or break off. But a museum curator in New York City was asked the question so many times that he started researching why the noses were missing. And he found out that the faces were defaced on purpose. The reasons are complicated. Power struggles between rulers, changes in or disagreements over religion political division, personal grudges, all of these are likely reasons for the damage, the criminal acts, the vandalism. But why specifically the noses? The curator suggests that because the nose allows someone to breathe, removing it would make that impossible and effectively kill the statue that represents somebody. There are many other ways, including natural ones, that these relics decay or become damaged over the millennia. And ahead of its opening this year, the Grand Egyptian Museum hired a number of experts to bring artifacts back to nearly original condition. It's a labor of love. An army of conservationists and archaeologists are delicately and skillfully restoring a treasure trove that's over 3,500 years old. It belongs to Egypt's pharaoh Tutankhamun, better known as King Tut. This facility's 17 laboratories are being used to restore up to 50,000 artifacts of this nation's most precious relics. Up to 40 Japanese experts are overseeing this vast conservation project, from training local personnel to using their own high-tech equipment. The technologies we brought for this project is uh, like X-ray radiography, um, the, uh, 3D scanning, and also like high-spec uh, digital microscope, which can do the investigation without destruction. The uh, glass over here is fantastic because the visitor, once in the galleries, can see the face of the statue of Ramses uh, II. Egypt's treasures are being restored for their new home next door, a $1 billion museum at the edge of the ancient pyramids of Giza. The Grand Egyptian Museum will uh, show more than 20,000 artifacts that have never been on display before. They uh, were uh, hidden in uh, storerooms, in magazines of the Egyptian Museum at Cairo, from in uh, storage facilities all over Egypt. 
More than 7,000 construction workers are building this massive museum thanks to a loan of $750 million from the Japanese government. It includes a conference center which can house up to uh, 1,000 participants of a conference. It has uh, a cinema theater which can uh, have up to 500 visitors and it has about uh, 28 shops and uh, more than 10 restaurants. It has really the potential of being the uh, resource for more tourism. After the conservation work, uh, it will attract more people to the museum. And I think I will, we will contribute to this uh, industry, touristic industry, in the future. Business news. Some American retail companies are just now reporting what their sales were like for the 2019 holiday shopping season, and at least for brick and mortar retailers, companies with physical stores, it wasn't great. Walmart is the biggest retail company in America. It says in the few weeks before Christmas, there was, quote, softness in sales of toys, video games, and clothing. It did see growth at its stores and websites that had been open for at least a year, but the increase wasn't as big as investors expected. Part of the reason for this, Thanksgiving fell later in November than usual. There were six fewer days between that holiday and Christmas. That gave Americans less time to spend money. And Walmart's not alone. Target, Kohl's, Bed Bath & Beyond, they all struggled last season. We told you yesterday how Macy's plans to close 125 stores in the three years ahead. There were exceptions, though. Costco did well, TJ Maxx had good sales, and Amazon had what one business writer described as a blowout holiday stretch. Despite its disappointing Christmas sales, Walmart said its largest business, groceries, is doing well, and the company expects a strong year ahead. It's been able to survive and thrive in the age of Amazon, and it's made a number of changes to do it. Online grocery pickup and delivery is part of that. There are also changes taking place in Walmart stores themselves, but it's hard to say what the overall impact of robots will be. Our last story this Thursday is about a match made in heaven. Dog heaven. Honey and Duke are the names of the dogs. They're rescue mutts in South Carolina, and apparently they have a lot in common. They both love treats, and they're both dogs. So with costumes custom tailored for the occasion and a ceremony attended by close human family and friends, Honey and Duke were officially united as dog and wife, and the dessert truly took the cake. To heal and to hold from this dog forward for Barker or worse, Guess you could call that howly matrimony. They might have a leg up on human weddings unless they needed a pre puptual agreement. But we wonder what the groom will do when he sees his first honey duke list. Listen, it's time for us to scoot, but not before we mention Monticello High School. It's in Monticello, Wisconsin. Thank you for subscribing and commenting on yesterday's show on YouTube. In fact, that's the only way to get a mention on our show. We thank all of you for watching CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.